Hi everybody, uh, thanks for joining me and uh, we're going to have a kind of a strange video today because uh, we're going to try and cover two, two or three things so uh, we'll see how we do. Now, um, I know you can't keep your eye on this jar. I, I was hoping if I held it real still you could see that there's uh, flies in there. <laughs> All right, do I take that off? I don't know. What are those things? Fruit flies. <laughs> okay, I won't take it off. With it. I'm sometimes, you know, sometimes you have one of those forgetful moments. So anyway, there's fruit flies in this jar, and. Uh, uh, what is in there is just regular apple cider vinegar. Uh, apparently the mother or the organic, which is more expensive, works better. But what I do is I use regular apple cider vinegar and I put a touch of red wine in here. And I've been canning tomatoes and peaches and I have to leave that on the counter because when you've got fruit sitting around, and you've got peaches everywhere. Uh, I mean, you get them this time of the year anyway, but you get them more if you're doing a lot of canning. Or if you leave bananas sitting on your counter, which is a no-no, because ethylene gas will kill your orchids' flowers. They will, the blooms will just fade away if you have anything that's sledding off ethylene gas, like fruit, any ripening fruit. So I, uh, <laughs> I keep my bananas in a pot in the cupboard with a lid on. <laughs> That's where I keep mine. And right now I have some tomatoes here because this time of year we're <laughs> always eating them. And, and I don't have too many orchids in bloom. Uh, okay, so at the end of the video, I am going to dump that onto some white paper towels because uh, somebody left me an eek. <laughs> it's okay. I don't mind. And uh, they said, that does not work. Don't believe that lady. Well, this is my proof that it works. And if it doesn't work for you, you might do be doing something wrong. Somebody leave, Some people leave dishes. And if you put of the same apple cider vinegar and you put a little bit of soap in it to break the tension of the water, that catches them. I have best success with these. These are sold online and in a lot of hardware stores and they're glass and they're sold as wasp traps. Now I picked mine up at garage sales and I just put a cheap uh, decanter top that had, had the rest had broken and it was at a thrift store. So um, they're flying around in there because there's a few not dead and a few just got in there. So. At the end of the video, we're going to dump that. And I'm going to spray some Dawn soap inside that hole because I don't want the ones to fly out. And if you Google Dawn soap and health hazard, you'll know why I'm using it. And this is what we kill our wasps uh, nest with outside. You know, I can meander on. But uh, first, before we do that, I'll just put that out of the way. Now, I get a lot of questions on making uh, my misting bowls. So, here we go, update on misting bowls. This one we picked up at the Kendall thrift store for, I don't know, five or ten dollars, not very much. It's an antique, had a couple broken, broken, I think one of these, yeah, right there. There's some broken pieces. Didn't bother me because I knew what, I think it was $5, I knew what I was going to use it for. The glass is quite thick. So right here, uh, 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 Jack drilled a half inch hole. And um, he used a diamond drill bit. We have not, uh, we have drilled so many things with that bit and we're still on the first one. And I, they're not real pricey and I can't remember the exact price, maybe 20, maybe up to 30, I don't know, dollars, but we have used it a lot. Okay, you don't have to drill a hole. Some of mine have holes 
some of them don't. So that's the first thing. And then I buy mine and I, I don't get paid for saying this, but I've tried a few different ones and I buy mine from House of Hydro. They are, they're the most reliable ones I've found. So when you buy one from House of Hydro and you can search online, they're in the States, you get one of these that plugs into the electrical and it has an end like this on it. And then you get the cool mist. Now, they have great big ones with more than one disc, and that's the disc in the center. They also send you a package of three replacement discs. And as you can see, I have a few. I think I've only ever used one. They're very, very good. And if you have any trouble, they're, they're, oh, they're just so good. Anyway, <laughs> you have replacement discs. You get three replacement discs, and you get a cool mist, one of these. They're great for you, say, in the winter, because it keeps the humidity in your house, so it's good for people that have maybe asthma or uh, cough, you know, keeps your, your throat gets dry, you catch colds because it's not how it should be. So um, anyway, I get the one disc. They sell three discs, six discs, depending on how big a, a thing of water. Some people that have a lot of orchids might have a tote and full of water, and they might use a bigger one. And then in the lid of the tote, you can you can make holes or however you want to do it, put a screen, and then the fog comes out. But that would be for a bigger room. But because this is how I'm doing this, this is a cool mist, okay? So, we've got that. Now, normally, if you buy one that comes in a bowl, they have these funny things. And the cool mist goes there, and they have a little... They have a little thing like this that sits on the top. But I try to be more multi-purpose than that. So um, what I've done, and on the bottom, you'll see this is just a dollar store tea light. And look for one with the big hole because you want this to fit right in that hole. So that's what I do. And, and then I had gotten some of those uh, chandelier things people don't use anymore and I glued them to the outside. Now this has black silicone on it, uh, aquarium grade. But uh, I used the clear, 100% waterproof. But the trouble is the disc heats up and some silicones can't take that heat. So I find when I do mine, I can't get that black glue anymore. So uh, as you can see, my tall one, it, it, one of them kind of fell off because the silicone didn't hold. And this is the one I prefer for in here because instead of, instead of this, I like to use a dish. So I could put the dish this way or I can put the dish this way. It looks pretty. And then I can put a, a orchid on the top. Maybe one I want special treatment. I want it to get more mist. Maybe a slipper orchid because they like more mist. They're small, they don't weigh a lot. So um, that's why I started doing this. Now, this one's not going to be dry, so I'm going to show you this with the short one. So, these are glued. This is just a cheap tea light, and that's what I look for. Now, some tea light holders come with two pieces of glass and maybe a pretty design. And I also have one or two of those that I've used in my uh, misting bowls. So, uh, before I put that in, I want to really show you how I do this. 
So this goes in to the center of this. There it is sitting in there. And it goes in the bottom of your bowl. And if you have, uh, I'm not going to say a man that can drill a hole because women are very capable. So anyway, if you can get a hole drilled, now I'll try and pin the number where Jack showed drilling in. It might have been a flower pot, but same bit, a diamond drill bit. And he's drilled into some of my lights. He's made big glass vases. We've made them into lights. He's used it a lot. So uh, you do not have to have the hole, but this end fits right through a half inch drill bit hole. So that goes on and there's this little rubber plug, like a sink plug, and I've never had one leak. And you push that little rubber plug into that hole really good. <laughs> okay, there. And my mister's in there. And you can, once that's in, you can pull on the wire to, so it's not in your way. So now we have the mister in the bowl. And I'll just show you because I'll plug this in over here. Okay. There, I'll plug that in. And um, there we go. Well, first, I'll put some water in. And I put some already. And when you refill, if you have one and you refill yours, make sure you use cold water because, as I said, the disc heats up. And sometimes you'll have trouble because the water goes down and it gets warmer and warmer. And uh, then it probably needs some fresh cold water put in. I never really worry about that. And that's why I like these big bowls. They hold more water, the water stays cooler, more workable. So you just put this water in. And I think they say like a half an inch above the little handle. Sometimes I do it deeper. I don't worry about it. Now also with your with your mister, you get one of these. And what this is, is the little the uh, excuse me, the little disc fits in this hole and this floats. And I've tried it in a bowl, but it's messy because it's floating on the water. And it, uh, it sprays a little more because you can't put nothing over the top. You can't put anything over the top. So it's just sitting like this. And you can't put, you have to watch when you buy a, a tea light or you make one, no matter what you make it with, you can glue anything that's firm enough to hold a saucer onto the sides of those tea lights. But even, uh, you have to have a, at least this much space, and I like more. Like this one, the tea light sits at the bottom, and it's, it's almost twice as big as this, and the saucer fits up here, but I like that. But right now we got the small one because that's getting glued, and my other ones are busy. So we got some water in there. Now, if you didn't have the hole, and uh, same with my fish, when I show you later, you can just put it over the side and have the cord go down on any bowl. So um, there it is starting already. See? And then I don't have anything, so there's little splashes, because normally I would use this, and it would look very pretty and I could sit something in it, but my tall one, I can't do that. Or you can just take any saucer or anything and put it over the top. Now, if you find you're not getting a mist, it will be because it's too close to the mister. And that's why I like them a little bit taller. So you can, you can design almost anything, and I'll go around when this is over and I'll show you the orchids, I'll show you the one I potted on the last video, 
that has all its flowers still. <laughs> How many videos have I done where the flowers have stayed on? And not only that, there was one bud that was dry when I bought it, but there was two others and they've opened. So it definitely pays to soak that bark at least three days, not too much. You don't want things growing in it. But I do three days has been working out good. And of course, your bark keeps on the dry side so things can't grow in there very, very easily. So um, we're going to have a look at that orchid and how it's doing. We're going to see some others and how they're all doing. And the other thing is I've used the rooting hormone for uh, the orchid when I repotted because I believe it's really helped. The leaves are still firm. It's really helped this orchid be healthier on its stress of a repot. And uh, um, I'm thinking of getting some uh, uh, seaweed. I don't want the fish fertilizer, but I'm going to get some seaweed organic extract. I haven't found any yet. I'll probably have to go online because I was using the little bottle of hormone that uh, was for dipping plants in, but it did help. Without a doubt, it did help. So let me just put this out the way. Here. So that's how you make them. And it's easy and you can use anything you got laying around. And uh, that's House of Hydro. They have lots of information on their channel. Um, videos you can watch, people, comments, and how they've used them, what they've used them with. So uh, there's that. Now, hmm. okay, the fruit flies. Or, um, <coughs> gnats also. This will catch gnats. Now, all my house plants, I put a layer of uh, sand on the top of them because I don't want gnats in my house plants. And the, if they try and lay in there, they can't get out because the sand's too heavy. It works in the greenhouse with my fruit trees. Uh, I've had it uh, in there for a few years now because I did have trouble with gnats gnats in there and uh, you could see all the larvae in the bottom oh on the soil it was just bubbling like a pot on the stove with larvae from gnats and I found out to use that much sand half an inch or so over the top of your plants it does not harm your plants use washed sand play sand for children and uh, I haven't had gnats in my greenhouse since and that's those are big fruit trees with lemons and oranges in there. There's always something in there. So, yes, it, it is good. And uh, then, I, of course, if I had gnats, which I haven't had lately for a long, long time, but I would use this because it's fruit fly season. I am also using this. And gnats, um, fruit flies are after the fruit. Gnats are after moist, decaying bacteria. To lay their babies in and so um, most of the time bark is if you've got that problem it's because your bark is decaying or you're using something else in the pot that's decaying because the bark the water the water does uh, it dries easily because air gets through and water goes through and normally that shouldn't be a problem and it might be a sign if you uh, I go around and if you stir each pot and you see some little flies flying around, one particular pot, check it out, take everything out of the pot, check it out, it might be just that one pot. Okay, now, I used to use Dawn. <laughs> I used to use Dawn dish soap because I thought they wash all the little baby duckies and things and I thought, wow, this is... This is good to use, right? So anyway, I found out differently when my fish died in my pond. But anyway, that's another story. Because um, I was spraying it for ants on the floor because I it kills ants. So if you have a lot of trouble with 
ants in your greenhouse and you spray this on the floor, they, they won't walk on it. They don't like it. It kills them. And uh, anywhere you put this, it, we kill wasp nests with this. So um, anyway, <laughs> now sometimes instead of using bug spray, this is what I use on my clothes if I'm going near the wasps. But anyway, I don't want all these little things flying out that haven't died yet. So I'm going to kind of pick off the lid a little bit. And I'm going to spray in there. So it might be a little soapy. I'm going to put the lid on for a minute. See if that kills them. Okay. And then... We're going to see what I caught, and it's probably going to look gross. And if you see something flying out of this, <laughs> it might be the genie, and you can make some wishes. Or it might just be some gnats. I don't see any far fruit flies. Ooh, that did get them. Okay, now I'm going to take it, and I've got, uh, I've got some serviettes in the bottom of my sink. Oh, yeah. So... There might be a couple in here. I'll wash this out. You might even see some little specks on the side of the jar because I see quite a few little specks. But it's hard because of the ripple in the glass. So, does it work? Yes, it does. I have a whole bunch of dead gnats. Dead fruit flies, Carolyn. So, these are fruit flies. Those are all dead fruit flies. I'm going to get it close up when I get the... And these are fruit flies. <laughs> Those are fruit flies. So anyway, yes. I'm going to leave this on the counter because they are dead. Boy, that, that Dawn got them. And then I can do a close up. So yes, it does work. So if you're having troubles, uh, you know, you can see these wasp glass ones anywhere, uh, all over the place, like hardware stores, places where they sell bug killers. Online, put glass hornet traps, and you should um, find it. So I'm going to take you for a short tour of the orchids. I'll show you a close-up of this. I'll show you a close-up of the misters that I'm using right now. And thanks for joining me. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I like this little tripod because I can just pick it up and go. Now, this is a Mr. Fogger that was not a house of hydro mister. It's been working for over a year. I lost track. It's got lights. Theirs do not have lights. It, it came with this dish at the thrift store. Cheap. I put the upside down saucer and the fish. I could have an orchid there, but I like to play, so I've done that. Now, if you remember, I repotted Fell memoria retic in a different container, a plastic traffic cone. She's getting new roots. She's getting a new leaf. And uh, she's happy. I got her so the mist comes and falls over and she gets mist. And I'm keeping her more away from the sun and she seems to be happier with that too. Now here's my two slipper orchids. I have plans for redoing them. And in the back, being nursed, is one mum picked out a long time ago. It's finally getting some roots. It was near dead. It had no roots. So anyway, this is the one I repotted in the last video. There was the one kind of upside down leaf. The leaves are still healthy, firm. They're doing good. And I think I saw a nice aerial root and maybe I stuck it here. But anyway, they look healthy 
And here's the flowers. They're doing really good. So I've repotted. Yes, it was stressed, but I did not have to wait till the flowers were off. And these ones on the bottom were buds that uh, opened. So here's my fish mister. And this is just with the wire coming out. Looks like he's a fish and he's been caught online. But he throws a lot of mist. You can see these online too. I naturally got it at a grad sale. But they do have them online. Glass fish. Probably all you have to put. So lots of new leaves. New leaf coming. Boy, they're growing firm and they're... They're almost growing straight up. And they're in the house because of the over 100 degree temperatures we've had off and on. And I haven't had time to put them back outside, which I will do. And this is Moon Glow. She has a nice new leaf coming. And lots of new leaves. Yeah. Look at this. They seem to be coming first up. This was an old burn from the sun, and it was against... It wasn't done in this one, but it was done in another one. I think it will you lose that. It was when I had it hanging one day in the sun, not realizing how hot it was. So this is one of my homemade bowls. And this is the other side. This one I potted in this pot. It's got lots of leaves, getting a new leaf. So, um, things are doing pretty good there. And, uh, <laughs> there's our bugs. We'll go do a close-up. I'll try. <laughs> Whether you'll see their bugs, but I'll try and get in there. These are dead bugs. There's one sort of crawling. Mm. I think I should throw this out soon. But, yeah, there's a lot in here. Ugh. So anyway, it does catch them. And it doesn't take that long either. So now we'll go, there's Maggie sleeping. Sometimes she's in that little hole under, it's a little kitty cat bed, and sometimes she's in the top. Depends on how she feels. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we are, the road cone. This was a new leaf that was growing. It grew so fast. This plant is so healthy, the leaves just grow so fast. I'm hoping to get one more than one spike this year off of this one. And so I set up this table over here so I got room. I can't put them in the window yet because it's still too hot in the afternoon. And this is the one that had the accident. But the leaf is doing good. It's just got a hole and some of the roots were damaged. So it's in the plastic paint can, one of my first orchid pots. <laughs> so lots of new leaves. Another mister with the upside down ashtray and glass that I put on this one. So in the back I have a fountain. I like fountains too. And uh, lots of new leaves. This was the, the newest leaves are all quite big. And this one has a new leaf coming. And this is a new leaf, and this is an orchid, any that have been watching me for a long time. It was rippled when I got it. All the leaves were rippled. And we thought, well, it's a difference in temperatures, but I don't know. This one's rippling too. I don't know. So, okay, here's one other one I'm babying. Now, a long time ago when I got this orchid, when the grass was green, no, um, it, it was beautiful, 
But even some of the comments said, oh boy, it looks like you should take it back and trade it in. It's, it's not well. But you know what? It's slowly coming. It's got a new leaf and it's got real good root system going down. So I, I think it might be okay. These leaves will never come back and be firm. But it'll get new leaves and they're hanging in there. So I'm glad about that. And believe it or not, there's a spike. I never get spikes this time of the year. But like I say, I brought them in from outside. It was so hot out there. And then just coming into the house being cooler too. And uh, it's going to lose a leaf. This one struggled with aphids for, with uh, scale for a long time. And uh, seems to have perked up. And new leaf here new leaf here and this is a new leaf it is losing one leaf I think I've just got like two or three that actually have lost a leaf they've all been holding their leaves so that is good so it's, uh, it's a little bit of a breeze out there but it's going to be very hot today so I'll show you the lady She's uncovered. Now, this is just the first coat of cement. I'm finishing the last first coat tomorrow. And then she gets a smoothing slurry all over, but <laughs> be prepared. I wonder if I can close in on her. Let's see. I have to go closer to the window. Oh boy, I'm crazy. So here she is. She's rough. I've never done this before. I'm thinking she might need a sarong because she's kind of busty. <laughs> anyway, everybody, <laughs> that's it for today. And thanks for joining me. I always enjoy having you. And uh, this is Sunny Hot Salmon Arm today. Isn't it, Maggie? Say hi to everybody. Yeah, so you got kisses? Huh? You got kisses? You good kisses? Okay, that's it. Bye, everybody. <laughs>